Rock Show, my name is Ryan. Now, if you don't know them already, this band is called 36 Crazy Fists, and you're listening to Ryan's Rock Show. Six crazy fists for your weekly essential. Be sure to send us your comments, your questions, and or your suggestions to ryansrockshow.com. Now, I had a chance to meet up with Dez from Devil Driver. Here's what he had to say. I'm just doing what I love, man. I'm yeah. surrounding myself with a bunch of good players and good people. I'm very blessed right now at this point in my life, you know. Uh, to do it with one band is hard enough, but yet, it, you know, to come back to the House of Blues and sell it out with another band, it's, un it's unreal, dude. It's really not. It is, man. It's a, I don't know. It's a very humbling thing. When you started out, like, you know, before Cold Chamber, when you were, like, younger, did you think it was going to be like this? I mean, I want to say no, but I say yeah, because I got a, like, I got a tattoo when I was 15, and my mom said, what are you doing? I said, don't worry, I'm going to be in a rock band all my Really? So I guess I'm up new. hilarious. But, uh, no, I never thought it would be this good, and I'd be this blessed to me. What were your goals when you first started out? Like just to just, do music. Yeah. Just to have a good time doing music and to be able to support myself doing it. Anything other than that was just uh, gravy. So. Did you ever get to the point to where you just wanted to give up? Like yeah, there was, yeah, was points in time in Coal Chamber. You know, when they found methamphetamines and it started tearing the band apart, I was like really, it upset me. And it was that, you know, there was a point where I said, okay, I can either start and go to go it again, or or bow out and say, look what I've already done. I mean, songs with Ozzy, Nikki, Travel the World with Sabbath and Pantera, like just let's stop. And we were laying in bed one night and she said to me, hey, you know, what do you love? And I said, music. So she says, well then, what else are you gonna do? And I said, music. 
What else would you do if you didn't have music? No, I did a lot of things growing up. So yeah. you know, anything I could put my mind to. I mean, I was I come from a blue collar construction family. So oh, yeah. I was on the construction site my whole life. Wait, did you grow up around here? Or did yeah. You well, I was born in Studio City. Oh, okay. so I grew up from here to Orange County like my whole life. Mm -hmm. So I know I know L.A. real well. Okay, yeah. I'm from Ohio, dude. So like coming yeah. out here, you know, culture shock here to Ohio. Huge, totally. huge difference, and they love your music over there. Dude. Yeah, man. Probably play the Al Rose a gazillion times. Tons of times. Yeah, we, we won't play it anymore after what happened to Dimebag. Uh, yeah. How that does that play a huge effect on you guys? Yeah, I mean, I won't we'll probably won't play there. There's still bands that play there, and they shouldn't. You know, that place should be torched. It I know the I, I know the owner, and I, I'm sorry for his livelihood being taken away and everything. But what happened was, you know, that place should be not there. I I totally agree with you, man. I haven't been back since like I refused to go back. Yeah. yeah. But to change the subject, I don't really want to yeah. talk about stuff like that. So, in all the years that you've played music, you know, so much has changed with, you know, the music industry and technology, and how has that affected you personally? Um, well, I was, I st when I started out, uh, you know, you could sell records. There wasn't a whole lot of downloading going yeah. on, so I have gold plaques on my wall. But, I mean, it, it's a... It's a strange thing. I say that here's the way to answer it. Is anybody doing anything underground? Yeah. Any kind of underground art, heavy metal, poetry, anything underground uh, that can be traded like that or downloaded, you really should uh, respect those people that are still doing that. You know, because we're obviously all doing it for the love of it, not for the money at this point. You know. Are you a supporter of that? Or no, I'm not no. a supporter. Okay. No, I think I, the guy. I think iTunes should be uh, sued. Because it should only take legally downloaded songs, mm -hmm. and the iPod should only accept legally downloaded songs, but it doesn't. You can illegally download songs, put it on an iTunes, put it on your iPod. So the guy who made that killed art. And the only reason, I mean, CDs are basically antiquity at this point, except for you know, Hannah Montana is out right now, yeah. but they're not going to stop selling CDs. You Do you know? think it's ever going to get to a point to where it's all going to be digital files? It's going to be digital, and someone is going to come up with the idea, uh, I'll just give it to them right now. It just come up with an iPod that just delivers the music straight from the satellite. That you can't put into your computer, you can't burn any high drives, you can't do any of that. You can put it on an iPod, you can put it in a player, but you can't make any hard files, and that's the way it's going to be. That sucks. Eventually, someone's going to say, "Well, not really," because then you'll have to pay for your music. Yeah. Just like I did when I was a fucking kid. Well, for me, like I'd rather sit outside at you know <laughs> twelve at night for you know midnight release and all that other shit. Yeah. It's all gone now. So. Like for me, I gotta like see the artwork, you know. I'm like, I don't know. I mean, just have music as the whole experience rather than just like a computer file. Right. And plus, it doesn't sound as good. No, it doesn't. It, would, it doesn't. Know? But you know, um, you gotta support your artists. Anybody who's doing anything underground or heavy mm -hmm. should really respect them for being out there right now because we're in the. It's not the golden ages of music right now, mm -hmm. you know. What about technology with like studio recording? It's good. Yeah. It saves time. I don't let it. I make sure we don't use it enough to take the vibe out of the thing, though. Yeah. So you guys don't go super heavy on like pitch correcting. I don't pitch correct. Really? No. What are your beliefs on that and stuff like that? If you can't rock? sing it, don't do it. Period. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's really. You got to go in and pitch correct your voice on every note. Mm -hmm. You're not a singer. Yeah, because I mean, you know, there are a lot of bands, especially younger bands, that feel that you know they can go in there, they can do a shitty take, and they can pitch correct it, which is true. Totally. You know. Totally. So what do you say to bands like that? Kids like that, it can go. Well, in you got to lay in bed at night by yourself and sing <laughs> in your own head. Really? So you know who you are and who you're not. So we'll see you live, and then we'll see yeah. if you can pull it off. That's cool. You know, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. I got favorite bands that are great, and then I go see them live, but the singer can't pull it off. That's the worst thing. That's the worst feeling for a fan ever. It is, huh? What are some bands that you really dig now, like newer bands? Uh, Dax Riggs, the singer of Acid Bath, new record. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, I've been listening to a lot of old country and shit right now. Yeah? Yeah. Old Hank, and I'm listening to a lot of Hank 3. What other styles of music are you into? I listen to blues, <laughs> classic rock. Like Robert Johnson? Love Robert Johnson. Can sing everything Johnson. he's ever done. You can't? Oh, yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. Have you seen the Crossroads movie? With yeah. Ralph Macchio? Yeah. Amazing. Dude, that's like the most inspiring movie I've ever seen. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Like, it's so good. Do you believe in like the legend where he sold his soul to the devil? Do you believe in something? I don't like believe that? in a devil. Really? I don't believe in a heaven or a hell. What do you believe? Karma. But I believe, I believe your soul and your entity is definitely learning lessons and you're going to go to a higher place. And I don't mean higher, like sky, heaven with some dude with yeah. a beard and gold paved streets or anything. How do you think karma works? If Not you're a horrible right. person in life and you don't learn your lessons and you keep coming back to this life and you don't learn them and you're a murderer, or you're, I mean, your obvious entity, your soul is going to, 
you know, dissipate. Mm -hmm. You know, they've done studies, and your your body loses something like 23 grams as soon as you die. Everybody, really? so the soul actually weighs something, which is just so fascinating to me. When you think about it, we're actually conscious beings, you know, just like every other animal on the planet. You know, I'm a vegan, vegetarian as well. What do you think happens when you die then? Uh, you either come back and be recycled <laughs> to learn lessons, or maybe you've learned your lesson and I don't know from there. So it's any man's guess. My worst fear is like just dying and having that be it. Don't have any fear. That's yeah. the best. To live life what with fear mean? is the worst. So That's just true. have no fear. And just go with it? Fuck okay. it. Go with everything. You could die right now. I could die right now. Do you write about stuff like that in your music? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, my lyrics are all about life, death, religion, how to treat one another, how to be treated, all that, yeah. Have you ever gone through times in your music career where, where people have treated you really bad? Uh, oh, well, when I left Cold Chamber, it was hard for people to get around me starting a new band, take a lot of flack. What kind of stuff would they say to you when you left Cold Chamber? Mm, you know, oh, uh, you know, went heavier because new metal died. It's like, no, new metal didn't die, bro. My, well, my band got on meth, so I left. <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. because the music's heavy, I mean, it's obviously my direction in the first place. But uh -huh. Cold Chamber was uh, just becoming poppier and poppier as they went along. Mm -hmm. And I, for myself, I had to bail. You know. And they were on math, like hardcore? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think Meeves, the guitar player, is coming out tonight, which would be good to see him because he's supposed cool. to be clean for like a year. And, good. you know, I forgive, but I never forget. But it'd be good to see him clean and sober and oh. all of those good good qualities in life. What about the other guys? Don't know. Uh, don't don't have any really specific need. Well, Nadia, I do, the bass player. I don't, I don't talk to anybody else. In that or haven't, I should say. So it just kind of just happened, and then you've moved forward and not look back? Well, you have to. I mean, if yeah. you have anybody negative in your life, or if you've ever had drug addicts in your life, or people that are bringing you down, then you know you can't be around that. You have to be around positive people. That's you have so to, true, man. Yeah, you have to expect, you know, your expectations. People around you should meet your expectations. For now like to make friends with and people that you have in your life? It's rare. It's rare that I really pick up. I mean, I got new friends, obviously. I meet mm -hmm. people every day, but yeah. I'm a, I have a really close-knit, tight group of people, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it right now. I mean, really? I kind of got a rule. No new no new friends for <laughs> a while. Keep it out of the circle. You know, yeah. You meet, I mean, you know, if you meet hundreds of people a day, then... Mm -hmm. You become picky and choosy. You start. You know who's who's there to be close to you because you know your dad's or who's there that really wants to just have a good conversation. Do you come across crazy fans? Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, yeah. for for doing music for how many years? Like more than ten years. Oh yeah, for almost 13, 13, 12, 13. So for doing it for thirteen years, you gotta have some pretty crazy fans out there. Insane. You know the most <laughs> most humbling thing is when you see the uh, tattoos. You know, people get devil driver tattoos. Then it's just like amazing and we've got thousands of them categorized on you know on tape it's awesome has anybody ever freaked out after meeting you yeah i mean you know if you're you know if you're really a fan of the band i guess yeah, yeah i mean the same way i would be you know when i or i have been when i meet my what I'm is that it. okay i'd be that way if i met oprah dude you know yeah, like, there you go you know everybody's oprah. got there i mean <laughs> if i met robert smith there's a few dudes i haven't met yet Mm -hmm. You know, when I shook Jimmy Page's hand, I felt energy totally. That's crazy. What's that like? I just, it take, makes you a kid. You're instantly 15 listening to Zeppelin in your room going, what the fuck? This dude's standing right here. I mean, I've been real fortunate over my lifetime to meet really all my heroes, man, mm -hmm. except the few that have died along the way. Johnny Cash, people like that. So, yeah. I guess I got to go back to just your entire career in general. <laughs> you got hours? Yeah, I know. Cool. <laughs> you guys were being managed by... Sharon and Ozzy, right? Yeah. How that come to play? Uh, we played the first Ozfest, uh -huh. and uh, I got talking with Sharon, and she liked me, and I loved her. I mean, I still love her. I love that family. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, I learned everything I do about management and being in this career and how to stay alive through her and through Ozzy. Because I heard they were like, like Sharon's like really smart with stuff like that. Like, she's, she's yeah. just insane. Yeah, she's oh. an intelligent uh, businesswoman. With a loving, caring side, and an, and also a side that you did not want to fuck with. And I love that. I appreciate. <laughs> I, have, I, have ton, I have four sisters, so I appreciate strong women. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm married to a very strong woman. So, so they really helped out the band. Oh yeah, you know it's definitely. I mean, I ended up doing a song with Ozzy. I mean, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Shaka Monkey song. Yeah, and then we did Oz yeah. Fest a bunch of times. I mean, we traveled the world with Sabbath and Pantera, and I mean, it just really opened a whole other world to us. I think. What were some of the best places that you played? Yeah, that's a difficult. I mean, anywhere there's more than 
15, 20 people. Give me yeah. the mic, yeah. You know what I mean? Give yeah. me a bottle of wine and a microphone, I'm good. So. Would you ever play like a really small show again? Yeah, I mean, we just started with two small, this is our third show. Yeah. We started with two small ones, five and 600 seaters in Modesto the other night. I mean, and it was ruthless. No barricades, people jumping on stage. I love it. You gotta get the energy in, you know? How do you stay motivated to keep doing this? Uh, we, You gotta love what you do, dude. You know, I'm a slave to the road. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, Bound by the Road is the name of the tour. Mm -hmm. There you go. So, I mean, I miss my family and my kids, obviously, yeah. but, you know, I, I, when I first met her, I wrote her a poem that said, you have the life of a wife of a sailor. So I think, she gets, it. Yeah, so I think <laughs> she gets it, you know? I mean, uh -huh. if you don't love this, if you don't love going into truck stops at 3 in the morning mm -hmm. to look at buck knives or to watch, you know, our drum set Philly buy shirts with beers on them because it collects <laughs> you, you can't, you can't, you know, if you don't like that, biscuits or gravy at yeah. 2 in the morning, you can't be on the road. So after you got your first tattoo, you said you were 15 and your mom mm -hmm. kind of freaked out. What did she say now? You know, I still get, you know, new tattoos. She still, I mean, <laughs> I got everything's tattooed and she still goes, another new one, you know. She's yeah. a mom. That's cool. Did she listen she's to music? Pretty, yeah, she, she's proud. Yeah. She came She came out to the Long Beach Arena show when we played with Lamb, Lamb of God. And yeah. I got pictures of her giving the metal signs, banging her head you know, <laughs> at 60. That's awesome. It's fucking amazing. Your sisters come out too? Yeah. Yeah, my whole family. So they've been pretty supportive all the way through? Yep. I was always, you know, I left home early, 17 years old, bailed out, came to Hollywood, couch surfed. Me and Meigs were actually in another band together before Cold Chamber called She's in Pain. Yeah. That band was in pain, so we left home. <laughs> so you just came to Hollywood when you were like 17? Yeah. Where'd you stay in Hollywood? Uh, I started bar backing actually at the Rainbow. Oh, yeah, like or Tony and them have known me okay. since I was 16, 17 years old. Damn, dude. Yeah. You just kind of hung out in Hollywood? Yeah, and then I got a job area. bar back in at the Cat House with Ricky Rackman when that opened up. And then I just we started forming bands. How has the L.A. music scene changed since then? Uh, I am really not familiar with how it is right now. Uh -huh. You know, I'm not. I'm really not. If there's any real good up-and-coming bands or anything. So I can't, I can't really answer that question. I mean, yeah. Uh, but at that time, music was dead. I mean, rock and roll and heavy metal was dead because it was mm -hmm. coming out of the 80s, the hair metal shit. So bands like Deftones, Corn, Cold Chamber, Static, System, uh, we, I, as far as I'm concerned, we saved this town. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now that I look back, cause heavy metal was dead at that point, in, in, in LA at least, you know? Yeah. So. You still talk to those, like, Corn and Deftones? Yeah, yeah, I just okay. sang. Jonathan got sick a summer ago or two summers ago, and I sang with Corn on stage for like 100,000 people, did two or three songs. Well, I mean, you see people on the road is how that happens. It's not like you call people every day, you know? Yeah. Just like on the road, you run into people. Cause like I said, it could be two in the morning at a truck stop. You see another tour bus. Everybody's yeah. you know talking. You got the next three, four. <laughs> I had uh, Ivan from Five Finger Death Punch on a while ago, and he yeah he actually mentioned you a couple times. Yeah, what did he say? I, but he just mentioned he said you were a good guy. <laughs> I signed him in Motor Grader. Yeah. I actually, signed the one that signed Motor Grader, and then uh, got the Motor to Virgin comment no the nice guy though ghost i guess yeah. his name is um I, I don't know what he goes by now i know his real name so i don't want to blow it <laughs> i just call him ivan there you go ivan okay. <laughs> he's going by his real uh, name. i don't yeah, know cool guy nice guy yeah yeah you said you had kids i do how many kids do you have three three kids how old is my 17 year old son is tyler right here is getting on stage with us tonight to do a oh, song oh shit that's your son the shredding guitar player he was like <laughs> do you have chamber music um i do she's on the front cover oh the red hair and the song Tyler's this song is, is so about, weird right now. It's about the kid, dude, who was very young at the time and now is 17. That is so weird. You can shred your face off on guitar. Because I was like, hey, are you here to see the show? He's like, oh, well, my dad's in there. Yeah. That is pretty nuts, and <laughs> I would never have guessed that. All so, you gotta do is look at the eyes. <laughs> the awesome, man. Are you in a band? Maybe it'll take after you, right? I don't know, because he gets straight A's and I don't. Oh, shit. Yeah. I guess he's in college classes, so he doesn't even A's and B's anymore. It's just fucking smarter than me. Where do you guys live now? Santa Barbara, California. Dude, that's nice up there. It's expensive, but it's nice. Yeah. It's a little village where everybody knows each other, and I like that. A lot better than L.A.? Yeah. I mean, I love L.A. Mm -hmm. You know, it's where I come from. I was born here, raised here. I would have no career if it wasn't for L.A., but as far as raising a family and when I come off tour, I need a smaller place mm -hmm. where I could chill out. I heard a rumor. This totally changes the subject. Was your dad in Leave It to Beaver? He was. Really? Which one was he? He was uh, Tui, and his brother, my uh, uncle, was Whitey, his, his grandfather. My whole family's acting background. They come from a stage acting uh -huh. background. And, uh, I mean, I never grew up with him around me. I never really, I never knew him, actually, until I was about, you know, 16 or something. Yeah. Did you ever do any acting? 
don't I put it past me. I could do it. Good. I, frankly, Dan, <laughs> the stage manager, is a better actor than me. He's been in stage his whole life. Oh, yeah. So if I had something come up, I'd have to hit him up and be like, okay, you got to read these lines with me. It's easy for me to be myself. It's hard to not be. So I guess actors, you got to transform. I'd like to be a bad guy in like Die Hard 20. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the first guy to get killed in the first like minute and a half. No lines, just like straight, just like, oh, that's it. Get in the Screen Actors Guild by going, oh. <laughs> Fight over him if it's really a word or not, because you know. That's uh, great. Just, well, yeah. <laughs> so where do you see things going in the future? What are the, the goals from here on out? Uh, hopefully the band uh, will keep our friendship and keep it tight and keep doing music and keep going and keep positive and keep putting out records. And you guys doing Ozfest this year? No, I haven't even heard that there is an Ozfest this year. But if there is, call me, Sharon. Thanks to Dez for coming on the show. We leave you this week shining some limelight on a band. They're called the Black Dahlia Murder. 